A woman's breast has three kinds of tissue. Glandular tissue, which includes the part of the breast that makes milk, called the lobes, and the tubes that carry the milk to the nipple, called ducts. Fibrous tissue, which holds the breast tissue in place, and fatty tissue, which fills the space between the fibrous tissue, lobes, and ducts. It gives the breast their size and shape. Breast density reflects the amount of fibrous and glandular tissue in a woman's breast compared to the amount of fatty tissue, as seen on a mammogram. In a mammography report, breast density is assigned to one of four categories. The breasts are almost entirely fatty, a few areas of dense tissue are scattered throughout the breast. The breasts are evenly dense throughout, or the breasts are extremely dense. Women in the first two categories are said to have fatty breasts. Women in the second two categories are said to have dense breasts. About half of women who are 40 or older have dense breasts. Women with dense breasts have a higher chance of getting breast cancer. The more dense your breasts are, the higher your risk. This mammogram shows a mostly fatty breast. And this mammogram shows a dense breast. Dense tissue can hide cancers. The fibrous and glandular tissue looks white on a mammogram. And so does a possible tumor. Since it's hard to tell the difference between a tumor and dense breast tissue, a small tumor may be missed. If you have dense breast, Talk to your doctor about your risk of getting breast cancer. Dense breasts are just one of several risk factors for breast cancer. Your doctor will also consider other factors, like your age and family history of cancer. Talk with your doctor about how often you should be screened and which tests are right for you. Breast cancer symptoms can vary from woman to woman, but there are several common signs to look for. You may notice a change in the way your breast or nipple feels. This may present as a lump or nipple tenderness. Other symptoms can present as a change in how the breast or nipple looks. Changes in breast size or shape, a nipple that is turned inward, changes in the texture of the skin of the breast, areola or nipple, or fluid discharge from the nipple are all frequent symptoms. In many cases, early breast cancer usually does not cause pain. However, you should always see your doctor about any breast pain or any other changes you notice that do not go away. A mammogram procedure uses low-dose x-rays to view and detect changes in breast tissue. A woman's breasts are composed of glandular tissue and ducts, fat, connective tissue, and blood vessels. If you detect a change in your breast tissue, such as a lump or mass, or if you are at least 40 years old, your doctor may schedule you for a mammogram. Before your mammogram, make sure that your breasts and underarms are clean and do not wear deodorant, since it may appear on mammogram x-rays as calcium spots. A mammogram usually takes about 20 minutes. A technician will begin by placing one of your breasts between two specialized plates. The plates will compress to flatten your breast so that the camera can get clear pictures of your breast tissue. You may feel some discomfort during the compression, but it will only last a few seconds. This procedure will then be repeated on your other breast. After your procedure, you may be asked to wait until a radiologist reviews your x-rays so that more pictures may be taken from different angles if necessary. Since a mammogram is a simple outpatient procedure, you will be able to go home immediately following the test. Women may not be aware that breastfeeding can lower the risk of breast cancer. And the reason that it works, or the reason that it lowers the risk of breast cancer is that when you're breastfeeding, your periods will stop or slow down during that time, which means there's less exposure um, of your breast to um, estrogen. And really it's the length of exposure um, during your lifetime to estrogen that leads to breast cancer risk.
Treatment options for breast cancer include surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, hormone therapy, and targeted therapy. There are several surgical options depending on the severity of the cancer. A lumpectomy removes the tumor and a clear margin of surrounding tissue. This procedure is always followed by radiation therapy treatment to kill unseen cancer cells. Mastectomies involve removing the entire breast. After a mastectomy, a woman has the option to have reconstructive surgery, where a new breast is created using implants or skin flaps. In some cases, the surgeon is able to preserve the nipple. Sentinel lymph node removal is typically performed in addition to lumpectomies and mastectomies if there's no clinical evidence that cancer has spread to the lymph nodes. Here, your surgeon will remove one or more of the first lymph nodes draining the breast and check it for the presence of cancer cells. If these nodes are clean, it is not necessary to remove more lymph nodes. However, if cancer has spread to these lymph nodes, a complete axillary lymph node dissection or removal of most or all of the lymph nodes in the armpit area may be recommended. Chemotherapy is a treatment that uses drugs to stop the growth of cancer cells by either killing them or inhibiting their cell division. Once the drugs enter the bloodstream, they can travel and reach cancer cells throughout the body. Radiation therapy is performed following surgery or in combination with chemotherapy. It uses high-energy radiation beams or particles to kill the remaining cancer cells or keep them from growing. The main types of radiation therapy are external beam radiation, internal radiation, also known as brachytherapy, and intraoperative radiation. In external beam radiation, such as Intensity Modulated Radiation Therapy, or IMRT, a machine called a linear accelerator delivers radiation beams from outside of the body to the cancer. It treats the breast from different angles while precisely targeting the tumor. Internal radiation therapy can be used after a lumpectomy or for women with early stage cancer. It treats cancer from inside the breast using hollow applicator tubes with a radiation source passed through them. In intraoperative radiation therapy, radiation is delivered during a breast sparing surgery, such as a lumpectomy, after the tumor is removed. The radiation source may be an external beam that comes from a linear accelerator or the radiation may be applied internally by inserting the spherical applicator from a mobile x-ray device into the breast. In either case, the radiation is limited to just the tissue that surrounded the tumor. Most breast cancers are hormone receptor positive, which means they need hormones in order to grow and spread. Hormone therapy works by blocking the cancer cells from receiving the natural hormones that they need. Tests on the tumor show if it has these hormone receptors. Targeted therapy uses specially designed drugs, such as monoclonal antibodies, that act on specific molecules inside or outside of cancer cells. Tests on the tumor samples can tell whether they have target molecules for these drugs. For example, Herceptin is an antibody drug that targets and slows the growth of HER2 positive tumors. These tumors have a high amount of HER2 receptors, which are the target molecules for the drug. You or someone you care about may have been diagnosed with breast cancer. This video will help you understand how to manage it.
Breast cancer is a type of cancer that begins in the cells of the breast. For many women, treatments for breast cancer may remove or destroy the cancer. Afterward, you should receive a follow-up care plan from your health care team. This includes going to follow-up appointments. Your doctor will want to make sure the cancer has not returned and check for health problems resulting from treatment. It's also important to get regular mammograms to check for breast cancer as recommended by your doctor. If you are on any medications, continue to take them as prescribed by your doctor. Take note of any side effects and tell your doctor. If you had breast surgery or other treatments, follow any instructions you were given. You may also need to make some of the following healthy lifestyle changes. Eat a healthy diet with more fruits, vegetables, beans, and whole grains. A healthy diet may reduce your risk of cancer or the chance of it coming back. It's also important for you to stay physically active. Moderate activities like walking, riding a bicycle, or swimming can help you feel better and less tired. Ask your doctor to recommend a physical therapist or exercise specialist that can help you design the right exercise plan for you and a nutritionist to help you design the right diet or food plan for you. Quitting smoking and limiting alcohol intake can help reduce your risk of cancer. Knowing you have cancer can be overwhelming. You may have worries about things like your condition and how it affects your family, treatments and hospital stays, medical bills, and your job. Fortunately, there are ways to cope with this. Remember that your doctor and healthcare team are there to answer any questions you have. Some of the following sources of support can help you cope with your concerns social workers, church leaders, counselors, and support groups. Talk to your doctor if you have any questions about your treatment plan, medications, or lifestyle changes to help you manage breast cancer. Breast cancer is the most common form of cancer in women today. Knowing more about your own breast anatomy can help you in early cancer detection and prevention. Your breasts are connected to small masses of tissue called lymph nodes by way of lymph vessels. The lymph nodes are responsible for collecting bacteria, cancer cells, and other unhealthy material. You have groups of these lymph nodes under your arms, above your collarbones, and behind your breastbone as well as in other parts of your body. Each breast is made up of lobes, lobules, and ducts. The lobes consist of smaller lobules that contain groups of tiny milk-producing glands. When a breast is producing milk, it passes through the ducts, into the nipple, where it exits the body. Breast cancer most commonly develops in the lobules, glands, and ducts of the breast. You or someone you care about may have been recently diagnosed with breast cancer. This video will help you understand some available treatment options. Breast cancer is a disease where some of the cells in the breast begin to grow uncontrollably. Treatments for breast cancer can include surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, hormone therapy, targeted therapy, and immunotherapy. There are several types of surgery depending on the size and location of the tumor. This video does not cover all available types of breast cancer surgery. During a lumpectomy, the tumor is removed along with some of the normal tissue around it. In a total or simple mastectomy, the entire breast is removed. During a modified radical mastectomy, the entire breast is removed. In addition, some of the lymph nodes under your arm are removed and sometimes other tissues in your chest. 
Your doctor may also want to give you radiation therapy. This therapy uses radiation to kill the cancer cells or keep them from growing. External beam radiation uses a machine outside the body that aims radiation at the cancer. Internal radiation therapy, also known as brachytherapy, uses a substance that gives off radiation through different types of delivery devices. The substance is put inside your breast where the cancer has been removed. Chemotherapy uses certain drugs to kill cancer. These drugs may treat cancer cells throughout the whole body or can be given to treat cancer cells in one area. Another treatment option is hormone therapy. Hormones are substances found naturally in your body. Estrogen is one of these hormones. Your body uses estrogen mainly for the growth and development of your uterus, breast, and ovaries. However, estrogen can also promote the growth of certain hormone receptor positive cancer cells. One type of hormone therapy blocks estrogen from binding to breast cancer cells so it cannot cause cancer cells to grow and divide. Targeted therapy is a treatment option for cancers that have a specific kind of marker on the cancer cells. One therapy targets cells with markers called HER2. HER2 is a naturally occurring protein on your cells that normally promotes healthy growth in your cells. Some cancer cells have too much of this protein. This causes the cancer cells to grow and spread more aggressively than normal cells. Targeted therapy drugs are designed to only attach to the HER2 proteins on cancer cells. As a result, the cancer cells stop growing and may die. Immuno-oncology, also known as immunotherapy, helps your immune system fight cancer. Cancer can sometimes hide from the immune cells that attack them. For example, both cancer and immune cells may have proteins called checkpoint proteins. When they attach, attack from other immune cells is stopped. Scientists are looking at one type of immunotherapy drug that blocks the checkpoint proteins from attaching to each other. As a result, the immune cell can attack and destroy the cancer cell. Surgical removal of the tumor is part of the treatment for the majority of breast cancers. There are a number of surgical options. Your doctor will help you decide which is best for your situation. In addition to surgery on the breast, it may be necessary to remove some or all of the lymph nodes under your arm. There are two main surgical procedures for breast cancer. The first is breast conserving surgery, or lumpectomy which is always coupled with radiation treatment. The second is mastectomy, which is removal of the entire breast. It may be combined with breast reconstruction surgery. In both procedures, it may be necessary to remove some lymph nodes. A lumpectomy preserves the appearance of the breast. The tumor, along with a margin of surrounding normal breast tissue, is removed. In this procedure, your surgeon will make an incision in the skin and remove the tumor with a margin of healthy tissue. It will be sent to a pathologist for examination to make sure there is no cancer in the surrounding margin of tissue. The wound will be closed with sutures. In a mastectomy, the entire breast is removed. In a simple mastectomy, only the breast tissue is removed. Your surgeon will begin by making an incision to remove an oval of skin, including the nipple. The breast tissue will be separated from the skin as well as the underlying muscle and removed for examination. Finally, your surgeon will insert drains to prevent fluid collection. 
a modified radical mastectomy, is a procedure where your breast tissue is removed, along with some or all of the lymph nodes under your arm. A sentinel lymph node biopsy is typically performed, in addition to a lumpectomy or a mastectomy. It may be done if a clinical exam or imaging study shows no evidence that cancer has spread to the lymph nodes. The purpose of the biopsy is to identify and check the first draining lymph nodes from the breast to make sure cancer hasn't spread there. To do this, dye will be injected into your breast to determine which lymph nodes are the sentinel lymph nodes. Your surgeon will remove one to three sentinel lymph nodes for examination. If these nodes have no cancer, it is unlikely other lymph nodes have cancer. If these lymph nodes have cancer, the rest of the lymph nodes under your arm, called axillary lymph nodes, may also have cancer. In this case, a complete axillary lymph node dissection may be recommended to remove most of the nodes in this area. An additional option in the case of a mastectomy is reconstruction of the removed breast. Breast reconstruction makes use of implants or tissue from other parts of the body, such as the abdomen or buttocks, to create a new breast. In some cases, the surgeon is able to also preserve the nipple. The reconstruction can be performed right after a mastectomy, known as immediate reconstruction, or at a later date, called delayed reconstruction. If you are considering reconstructive surgery, your doctor can help you decide what approach is best for your situation. Young women can and do get breast cancer. About 11% of new cases in the United States occur before the age of 45. I specialize in cancer genetics and I meet with people who either have a personal history of cancer or a family history of cancer and may be at risk to develop cancer. Family history of breast cancer could include um, multiple generations of women and or men who have had breast cancer, and those breast cancers tend to be at an earlier age, so before the age of 50. About five to 10% of breast cancer cases are hereditary and are due to inherited changes in genes such as BRCA1 and BRCA2. We inherit half of our genes from our mom and half of our genes from our dad. So it, there is a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation in the family. It could come from either or, or both sides of the family. Not every family that is BRCA1 or BRCA2 positive will have a strong family history of breast cancer. So if a woman has a concern about uh, a family history of breast cancer or, or their personal risk of breast cancer, the best thing to do would, would be to talk with family and, and learn about the family history, learn who in the family um, had breast cancer, at what age they had it, and, and gather that information and make an appointment to speak with a, a genetic counselor. In order to reduce the risk of either developing breast cancer or identifying it at an early stage, women have a, a number of different options available to them. If you are considering genetic counseling and testing and want to determine if it's right for you, you should talk to a health professional such as your obstetrician or gynecologist.